off in the last tutorial, we had built a maps activity that, uh, when it initialized, placed a marker in Sydney, Australia, and then placed uh, a map on the screen. What we're going to do in this uh, final portion of the My Directions tutorial is we're going to allow the user to pick uh, an address and then show directions from the current location to that address. So let's go over to the layout now and if we go there we see that currently on your screen you'll see that there's going to be a fragment displayed and there may be some warnings or error messages saying it doesn't know how to display the fragment and the reason for this is that the maps activity typically uh, uses this thing called a fragment for its layout and that's another way of saying that the uh, the map, it, the layout for it is determined at runtime instead of at compile time. So what happens is that when the map is created, this fragment is uh, blown up and inserted into the layout uh, dynamically. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that fragment and that fragment's going to have to share some space with the spinner that we're going to add to allow the user to pick an address. So instead of using this WYSIWYG editor on this project, we're going to switch over to the text editor. And you can see now on your screen, you probably just have this fragment code right now. But what you need to do is you need to change your XML file so that you create a relative layout and then put this fragment inside of it. So if you, if you want to, you can copy most of this information from one of your other uh, projects that you've done, or you can just type it in. It's not that much. So we're going to create an XML version definition, then put in a relative layout. Now, the important thing here is you need to set the context and uh, this first part has to do with the name of your project, all in small letters, and then the name of the main activity, which here is called Maps Activity. And the other thing you need to add is this spinner. And we're going to put the spinner at the top of the screen and then put the fragment below. So what we've done uh, to get that to happen is we've added this layout below to the fragment widget. and. Uh, that will force the fragment of the map to appear below the spinner object. And we've uh, limited the spinner object to a height of 100 pixels. We want to reserve as much space for the map as possible. Uh, the other thing I've done, very important, is you need to change this the layout height to wrap content instead of match parent. Otherwise, it, your app will either crash or it will take over the spinner space. We want to give the spinner its own space. So just do wrap content here. OK. So with that out of the way, let's go back to the main code again. And I want to show you now we've added the spinner code. And uh, what we've done is we've added a spinner called SP addresses. That's going to hold the addresses that are going to be the choices. And then we have an array list that's going to contain all the various addresses that the user can pick from. Uh, the onCreate method is left pretty much uh, untouched. Now we've created this initialization method, but you notice that the initialization method is not called from inside onCreate. And the reason why is that we want to wait for the map to be built before uh, initiating any activity with the user. So uh, on this app, I've called the init method from the onReady, the map onReady, which is a callback we get when the map is already finished being built. So we put the init call in there. In human time, the user cannot tell the difference. Uh, they'll see it happen all instantaneously regardless. But if we were to call the init method from in here, uh, we might likely get a crash because some of the objects that we want built have not been uh, finished being built yet. OK, so inside this init method, I've first associated the spinner on the layout side with the spinner on the uh, Java side. And as a reminder, in here, when I created the spinner, I uh, put in an ID here that I'm going to be able to be uh, used in the Java code. OK, so we've created that. And then we've created these spinner choices, which is a simple array list of strings. And I've hard coded three possibilities here. Uh, this is the school where I teach. And there's some two other famous landmarks put on here. And um, in the enhancements, you're going to give the user a, an opportunity to add to this list. But right now, these are the only three choices I've coded. And then I've created the uh, array adapter that's going to be used for the spinner and um, put in the overrides that are necessary to create the spinner object. You, this is all standard. You can copy it from your previous spinner code. OK, let's run this now and uh, see what we got so far. OK, here it is running on the emulator. And you can see that the space for the spinner is right at the top here. And here is the map being displayed with the marker from Sydney still very much intact. And uh, you can go over here now and pick 
any of them. Notice that I put in a blank entry. You can see that up here uh, for the first one because I don't want there to be a default choice. So when it comes up, it comes up with a blank and then the user can pick from one of these three addresses. So for example here, I've got right now just a toast message echoing it, but soon we're going to change the app to give us directions to that location. Right now when the app first powers up, we create a marker in Sydney, Australia and display it, but that's not what we want to do. We want to display instead the current location. So I'm going to replace some of this code now. with this new code and I'm just going to talk you through this. Um, in an older version of Android Studio it was fairly quick, a single line to get the current location but they've made things a little bit more complicated going forward. So we're going to have to create a, a location manager by using the Android system service and then we're going to have to uh, set up some criteria uh, objects. It's not, not really all that important, you can copy this pretty much as is and uh, we're going to have to create a service provider. And then this is basically the key. We're going to ask the service provider where our current location is, and we're going to store that in this location object. And uh, because there's a potential for this current mobile device not to be able to handle these requests, we have to surround this with a try-catch block. Uh, we're not really doing anything in this try-catch block, but it's a requirement right now. Uh, otherwise, we'll have an uncaught exception. And then once we have the location, uh, hopefully that'll happen 99% of the time. We'll get our current location. Uh, we'll be able to show that uh, on the map with a little marker. And I'll just uh, replace this text to say start. So if you click on the marker, it'll show this. Okay, the last piece of code we need to add is when the user selects an item, we want to show the directions from the current location to the uh, selected item. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here uh, to the a method that's called each time the spinner fires and in here we're going to add some code from our intent tutorial that we had has shown previously and use an intent to display the directions. So I'm going to just put that right in here. So what we're going to do in this method that's called each time the user selects a new item is we're going to create a URI string and we're going to insert in there the item that was most recently selected and then we're going to parse that uh, URI uh, to make it readable to the browser parser and then we're going to simply launch another map activity to show directions from the current location to that new location. Notice that the source address is left out here so the source address by default will be the current location. To test this app we're going to have to use the APK file and a regular uh, mobile device because since we're testing to see if current location works we can't use the emulator. When I try to build an APK I get this error called the dex index overflow exception. I'm not sure if you're going to get this error when you try it or not but let me show you what you need to do to fix this. Now if you get this error the fix is fairly simple as long as you know exactly what to do. You want to go over to this Gradle scripts directory and open up the build Gradle file, not the one for the project but instead for the module and you want to insert this one line inside your default configuration saying that multi-dex enabled true. And that should do away with this error and then you'll be able to build the APK file without any problems. Let's try it again. And you can see now that the error has gone away and the APK file has built fine. So I'm going to take that file now and download it into my phone and run the app. Directions app installed on my phone. I'm going to open that up. And the app is going to start by showing me where I am currently, which is Stamford, Connecticut. And I can expand this just like a regular Google map. And now I want to drive somewhere on my list. So I go up to the spinner and click on that and let's say I want to drive to the St. Louis Arch I'm going to pick that you see the toast message showing what I selected and now the intent object is going to fire up a new map and this time it's going to start with the current location and show the path and down here if I drag this up I can get a list of turn by turn directions if I press the blue button here it'll start the uh, GPS app working Let's say I change my mind, I want to go somewhere else, I can hit the back button. And now I can pick something else on the spinner. Let's say I want to drive somewhere a little closer, like the Empire State Building. And there it is. It's a much shorter route, and I can uh, start the actual driving. 
and I can look up here for the turn-by-turn -turn directions, etc. Thank you.